in our dashboard. Sorry, I'm just turning this on. Someone else may have that same issue that you're encountering. So the issue is here, it seems like we have the same person logging in. Um, put, in uh, put in Joshua. Okay, hold on. So we have a lot of these. We get um, these, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'll, you happened? probably have to sign in. You haven't signed yeah. in. He's putting, he's giving you bad email addresses. Okay, that's no, not even that. It's the same, it's the same person. Because how many, I don't really believe in coincidence that much. How many Joshua Kellys are there, right? So no, I know it's the same person. Yep. They're so, giving uh, fake information. I would, uh, like, personally, actually, I'll tell you, I will ask you what you would do, then I'll tell you what I want to do, with, what I would do with these leads. What would sure. you do with these leads? Uh, so one of them, you have a good phone number. Right. Six, four, seven, seven, five, six. Did you call this guy? Call it. Okay. Do you want to call it? Let me grab your phone. Yeah. Okay. I'll grab your phone. Um, the other one is one does not have a good number. And the other one, the email didn't go through, but let's see if the number, I sent you the, the link for it. Hang on. Yeah, I've got it. I can find it. Here we go. Sorry. I'm just giving, I'm just giving the chief his phone. Cause I sent him the text number for the number. Yeah. So we'll do the top on 5673. Yep, that's what I sent you this morning. I like how this webinar is starting. Yeah. <laughs> so first one is not assigned. So that Josh not assigned. Yeah. Number is not assigned. Yeah. So you're going to mark that number as being invalid. You're going to log that as a wrong number. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the pipeline, you would move that to the garbage. So you would, okay, so we're in agreement. I would garbage that. But you said yeah. garbage. I delete them. Is there a difference? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the garbage, they stay in your, they still stay in your system here. If you delete them, Joshua may go back and find your website again. And then it's going to, if you mark his phone number as being invalid, if he finds himself back on the website, uh -huh. it'll ask him to provide a valid phone number. Okay. Um, so it'll kind of block him out. Now, both of these, so this Joshua Kelly here, mm -hmm. um, he essentially... Hey, both his emails are showing invalid, yep. but it's not necessarily that they are invalid emails. It's that he's marked communication as being spam at um, some point in time, whether it's from our, from you guys or he's, regi he's registering all over the place and he's marked some email as spam that came from our platform. Um, so there's a suppression on his email. So if you call the one where you've, it shows that there's a valid email or valid phone number, and let's say it is Josh, and he says, yes, that is my email address, our support team can remove that suppression for you because it's been under 12 months. Who do if I contact in the support team because I actually have a situation like that, but carry on? Yeah, you just reach out to support at agentlocator.ca. Um, mm -hmm. Open up the lead, grab the URL for that lead. It'll mm -hmm. have a number at the end of it. That's who they need to know who they're removing this expression for. Okay, perfect. I'm going to do that. I have, I actually have somebody with regards to that. Mm -hmm. um, if it's been over 12 months, you can remove the suppression yourself. It'll show you remove it. It'll say remove suppression. Yeah, we haven't been with you for that long. Um, no, no, not you. The lead itself. Like as I said, it doesn't have to be an email from you that they've marked as spam. It can be any email coming from our system that mm -hmm. they've marked as spam. So leads will often register like this guy's registering. He's probably registering all over the place. You've got him twice. Who knows who else has got him? Someone's obviously been emailing him. He's marked something as spam, whether, you know, sometime within the, you know, the last year from somebody, but there, it puts a suppression on our system to prevent communications. Okay. Um, quite simply, when we say that he marked us as spam, we had this issue with Agent Locator about a month ago, month two, ago, months. two months ago. And what we've been told is, is that the these this person hasn't necessarily marked us as spam, that we have to keep trying to find out if, if the it is a valid email address or not, because some sort of glitch, everything just gets marked with that particular message. 
You're very distorted. <laughs> Do you have a gun or account for four days just because every course of four days? Yeah. Yeah, oh, so no they usually Are don't you give you that enough? note, though. It'll usually give you the note that there's a suppression, um, if there's the suppression. If it's showing as invalid, but the person is saying, that is my valid email, that could be their inbox. They could have really high spam filter settings on their inbox, and it's just blocking anything. Their, their inbox communication is blocking messages um, because they just have, like, super, super high spam blocking. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Cause yeah, usually when it's it's a suppression itself, it's our system getting that suppression. We know it's in the back end, that's why it's showing in the system. If it's not showing that, then it's something on the user's end likely that that's blocking those messages. Fantastic. So moving forward, we're just gonna contact support. Yeah, just contact them. So if, if there's a suppression that's like, yeah, no, like they wanna get the listing, they can remove that suppression for you. Okay, perfect. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we do have to get permission though, right? We can't just go, oh, it's a suppression. That's kind of like we have to get the lead saying, yes, I want, I want. How do you, those. How, how, and in what format do you want the lead saying yes? Well, it could be just in a conversation, right? So are you guys, you, you guys are using the dialer, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So if it's a call note, just throw it in there. You know, the, if they really needed to, they can listen to the call. Um, it's just, you know, we don't want people being like, here, here's a list of people with suppressions, remove it. We can't do that, right? So that, that puts us in violation of the castle regulation. So um, we have to stay compliant or everything gets shut down. We don't want that. Yeah, so um, I hope that helps you out somewhat. But yeah, Joshua Kelly, I would call that one number, see, See if you can get a hold of him, things like that. Um, again, if it's a bad number, it's going to prompt him to give you a valid phone number, which sometimes he, he will. And we don't delete it. Okay. I yeah. Just, deleting the just in case he could, because the website has cookies. So you got to remember that, right? So he probably came in and had a, a thing. And then the second time around, um, for whatever reason, maybe he doesn't, he could have multiple email addresses that he uses for this kind of thing where he's like, this is, this is my spam email. I'm going to give everyone because I have no interest in receiving any of these communications, that sort of thing. Right. So everyone is, everyone is, is a little bit different, but uh, he's clearly just going around. He's interested. He just doesn't want to deal with anyone, but it looks a bit right. So, um, but yeah, so let me just see something. So Beverly is on with us. Hi, and hello. Great Beverly. conversation. Very yeah. valuable. So for those of you that might have been like white noising that out, I just want to bring to attention that the emails and the unsubscribe, the spam, the everything that we see, this is the number one reason why you want to be calling your leads because it's, this is across the board. I don't care what CRM you were using. It is the email servers and the spam filters that people have. And they don't even, most people don't even realize they have spam filters. And I was just going through this with a team that I, another team that I train, we've seen a, a high percentage of emails that are not going through and even they're showing that they're going through, but people are saying they're not receiving them. And what happens a lot of times is if the person isn't opening the emails and being very careful with setting up daily updates, because if they don't open them for three, four or five emails, their email server deems them as not important to the receiver. So they start sending those emails to the spam. And okay. people don't even realize that they're going to spam. They don't want them to go to spam, but they're not going to open an email every single day. Right. So it just kind of happens by osmosis. So it is very important for us to stay on top of what's going on with the leads, especially with today's technology and it being easier for them to Google and drop into someone else's dashboard than it is to come back. So that was great conversation just to be paying attention. And I always recommend looking at the email addresses and the last where it is, is it Yahoo, is it Gmail, is it AOL, is it .ca, .com? Because if you notice, Sorry, uh, if, you, if you notice an algorithm of it being the same email, that is a great campaign to use 
to be able to contact your leads and saying, hey, we've been having problems with AOL addresses, please check your spam. And it's a great way to re-engage people. So just FYI on that. Mm -hmm. Trebnet emails do the same thing, just so you all know. If you guys are using your, uh, your Treb emails, then Trebnet will actually block communications from even getting to you. Mm -hmm. um that that's common that they do that which is and they you can't even find them like they basically dismiss them completely from their system and yeah it can be troublesome those because they do and it's frustrating they, because mm -hmm. we have no control over that and even when people say they want to receive them you set it up and they still don't get it mm -hmm. um and a lot of it has to do with the links that are in the email is where they detected a spammy because the, mm -hmm. the links are in there to the homes so it is really paying attention because you're paying for the leads and that, that just becomes another layer of responsibility whenever you do have leads coming in to help increase the conversion. Now that you have the awareness of it, you know, just making sure I always say the number one objective is have the conversation with the lead and determine their time frame. And the second obje objective is keep them. And the only way we can keep them is to be paying attention to monitor the activity of the people that do genuinely want to receive emails and, and confirming their emails is a huge part of the main mm -hmm. conversation and asking them how often they want to receive them and then just watching them because if they're not opening them, they're probably going to spam, which leads us into, I think, our topic today of the dreaded F-U words, follow-up. Yeah, the follow-up, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I know that we had a call with Indeed a while back and we were doing it and he's been on top of these leads and he's, he's doing his follow-ups. It's now getting them from a follow-up to an appointment, right? Because we can keep nurturing the leads, but when does it happen where we're actually now taking this lead as a follow-up into an appointment to get them in the car looking at houses to a transaction? And the funniest thing is that is the most difficult part of this entire process. Paying for the lead and getting the lead is easy. Picking up the phone, maybe not so easy because so very few of us do it. Mm -hmm. Having the conversation, still not so easy, but we still do it at least one time, right? We, we, at, least make, we, we at least make the attempt one time. So it, it, it gets more difficult as we're coming down the lineage. Paying for the lead, easy. Capturing the lead, easier. Having, making the phone call, not so easy. Having the conversation, not so easy. And then the follow-up is where you start funneling these leads into what feels like the impossible. And what I like to say at this point is the only reason it seems impossible is because we see all the leads. We see a big number. What we're not taking into consideration is not everybody wants to buy a house today. Not everybody wants to buy a house tomorrow. Not everybody's gonna answer their phone. Not everybody gives you the same phone number. So literally if you have a thousand leads, you can take out 30% that are gonna give you bad phone numbers that are gonna be on a completely different timeline of communication. And then you're going to have people that have no intention of making a move, which is a good 15%. And then you have people that are a year to two years out, which is another 20%. So really the number that you see is not a real number in what we can actually convert. So if we start looking at our database with a little bit different eyeballs and say, okay, my number isn't as big as what I think. The opportunity is there, but where is that opportunity? And start attacking it from a different perspective and saying, you know, I can't close a thousand people. I would be insane if I tried to close a thousand people. Thank God they're not all ready at the same time because you would lose your marbles, right? You, you just couldn't do it. Nobody has enough systems in place to close every single lead that comes in. So thank God they're not all closing. So we have to like filter down through that process and realize we can't make people pick up the phone. We can't make people respond to a text message and we can't make people open up their emails. So at the end of the day, as long as we are doing what we need to be doing so that we can say, I did everything I could. I texted, I called, 
I called this many times. I emailed because in a year from now, when they say I already purchased, you're like, mm, okay, I did everything I absolutely could have because I couldn't have made them do anything. As long as we're going through the process and we're doing what we know will work with the few that are ready, willing, and able, we know we will convert. So if you're going through your processes and you can say, I did everything I could, you're doing the right thing. But if you're looking at your leads going, ah, it's a missed opportunity, I never even called that lead, then you have no opportunity. So I don't care how many leads you have, if you're not working them to be able to say, I did everything I could, you're missing opportunity. And we have to really realize their time is not our time. And that's the biggest frustration because when I sit down and make phone calls today, I want an appointment. I want a closing. But when it doesn't go our way, that's when we go, these leads suck, right? So it's really just flipping the brain and being able to look at each one of these follow-ups as just another call, just another call. I'm doing everything I need to be doing. I can't change the timeline. But what does that system and process look like? What do I need to do to be able to say I did everything I could? And I think that's kind of what we want to talk about today, Crystal. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So kind of like where that follow up is and maybe going through. So if you go into his system. I need a verification number. Who got it? I got a verification number. That verification number is 7562. Okay, I need another one because <laughs> it was too long. So oh. look here, I'm going to resend code. Okay. Um, I don't think, all right, I'm going to have to log back in again. Hang on one second. Oh, I got to hang on. I got to go back and retrieve everything because it didn't save anything. Sorry about that. That's okay. Okay, now what's the code? Yeah, I haven't gotten, uh, okay, there we go. 9314. That did not work. 9314. 9314. Oh, there we go. Oh, must have been user error. You sure you want me calling your leads? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love the dialer because you can't dial the wrong number. It is what it is. You click the button and it dials it. That's right. All right. So, so break it down and, and explain to me your struggle here. So I'll show you one thing that we have, and he I'll let him I'll let him uh, discuss with you uh, his his struggles so far. Um, so if you go into a safe filter, you're going to see number five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those are follow-up filters that we created for him that are going to basically, once he has a conversation with a lead, he's going to tag them as to the frequency of follow-up based on that conversation and the potential timeline of that lead. Um, so these are all set based on a call being logged or a text being sent things like that. So it's just a matter of, you know, kind of like your initial lead filters. These are your follow-up filters, your check-in filters, see how they're doing. Okay. Um, now, Najib, you, are you using these filters for the most, most of these leads kind of fall within like the days of when you should have been checking in on them, but are you, you're regularly using these filters for the most part? Yeah. So we're regularly on the website. We're regularly touching our leads. Uh, just in the last, I would say maybe six, seven days. Six, six, seven days. It's just we've uh, uh, we've just acquired like two new clients, and we're just going every day out uh, out with them. So, uh, but, but before that, we're touching. We cleared everything every on day basis. on a daily basis. Things were being cleared. Okay. Perfect. Love it. And you have two hundred and seventy-five leads in here. How long have you had Agent Locator? 
uh, January, February. And how many have you converted? Zero. That's why we're here. And this is why I'm concerned and we're here. Okay. So talk to me about your statuses here. Are you moving them? Is everybody in tried to contact legit you have not spoken to? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I just want to take an assessment because what I like to do is look at where is the hole in the boat. Okay. Because at the 275 leads, the biggest amount of leads are going to be a leads that, that you have not yet spoke to and leads that you have spoke to that have a situation that those are, that those are literally legitimately your, your two biggest pieces. And if they're out of kilter, I can go, Oh, there's something going on here. Um, so I just want to pull, um, status, hang on, lead status. There we go. No, I don't want that one. What? No, I don't want that one. <laughs> pipeline status is the one I want. Fantastic. Oh, what? Why is pipeline status? I don't want that one either. Do I just want pipeline itself? Too many options. It's like going to Starbucks. Which one do you select? There we go. Oh, perfect. So you need yeah, perfect. All right. Let's do some quick math. 275 minus 144. 275 minus 144, uh, 275 minus 144, 131. Okay, so it appears that 131 leads have either been spoke to or have been garbaged because yeah. they're not in the try to contact or new, right? So yeah. More than half of your leads you haven't even had conversations with. Good news, right. right? So when you look at the hole in the boat, okay, we just need to have more conversations. That's it, right? So lead number one there. Okay. So with that being said, when we know what the problem is, what is the solution? And when I look at needing to have more conversations, there's a myriad of ways that we can make that happen. We could sit and call 144 people every single day, but who the hell wants to do that? That's a little like monotonous, right? Right. So you break it down into priority. And I always look at the new leads being the highest priority, the newest registered being that second priority, and then your active leads over the last 30 days being the third priority. The ones that are inactive aren't as high of a priority and they can just kind of sit there, right? You can get to them as extra credit. You can work with them, whatever. But when you're looking at 144 leads, what do you do? The best way to have more conversations is changing the times that you're calling the leads. Okay. Because people do have habits. If, if you're like, okay, every day I'm going to, I'm going to lead gen from nine to 11. Well, that's all well and good, but if people have a schedule and you're calling them always between nine and 11 and they can't answer the phone, you're never going to catch them. So changing the times that, that you're reaching out. So what I'm hearing from you all, there's a, a twofold thing happening. A, do you feel like you're having enough conversations? And B, the conversations that you're having, what have those conversations been like? You want to answer? Uh, sure. No, we're having lots of conversation, I think. We're having, we, when we actually get through to a lead, then we'll have a half decent conversation. We'll do the, uh, we'll discuss what they're looking for breakdown because everybody goes in, it's like, oh, I want to buy something at $700,000 plus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not very helpful. Can we help you out here? Let's narrow down your timeline, your timeline as well. Verify as your, their email address. Make sure that their price range is what they logged what in. What type as, of home they're looking for? What type where of exactly home, they're looking? They, exactly. So where they're looking for? Just trying to get as much information as we can. Uh, you know, and then and then it's follow up and then it's like, okay, we're going to be sending you out some things. We'll give you a call in about a day or two. Just look at the product that we're sending you. Give us an idea. We're going to touch base with you. Fantastic. Perfect. Perfect. Try to get that person on the phone again. 
So the emails are going, they're opening the emails because we've marked all of them for as soon as anybody touches anything, we, we've clicked that thing. We, we get an email saying yeah. this person is open. This person has looked at three um, or this person is active. This person has looked at three properties. We can touch them by email, um, but we can't seem to get them back on the phone. So we know that they're we know that they're paying attention to our emails because I'll we'll even do the thing where we will we'll grab the the listing like the, if they haven't been on yet it's not their timeline we'll go in we'll grab the latest listing say hey have you had a chance to check out this listing it looks perfect for you. it's gorgeous da 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 neighborhood everything they'll go in and they'll open the listing you try to contact them you still can't get them by phone and we've also tried your suggestion i thought yeah, earlier that you mentioned you know trying people at different times so we've tried where myra is maybe reaching out in the morning and then i'm reaching out in the afternoon or evening or vice versa but we're trying at least two three different uh times throughout the day to reach out to these people and then even on the weekends as well it's like it'll be we don't we won't call in the, uh in the on the weekends we won't call it eight o'clock in the morning but we'll do like from 9 30 on until noon and then we'll do maybe the early afternoon and then into maybe the late afternoon just to, just to mix it up so you yeah. see we're a little bit frustrated what would beverly what do you suggest we do keep doing it keep doing it that's the, that keep doing it <laughs> we got to just keep on moving forward and keep on doing and it. I totally feel your frustration. And that's where whenever I had started talking about this, the only reason we get frustrated is because we have an expectation of the results that we want. Right. Right. If you remove the expectation, you remove the frustration. No. So the expectation and the fees to get the leads. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You are not paying so much money. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm looking at the amount of phone calls, four, eight, five, five, six. If I could pull up my one platform, you would literally be seeing 25, oh, 38, wow. 52. I have been doing this in one of my platforms since October. And I think since October, I go back between like a two week follow up to a one month follow up because they were a year out, right? So people that were in the fall, when I talked to them, they're like, I'm a year out. Those are the ones that are popping in my bucket right now because it's July. Are you still on track for September, October? Because it's time now. Yes. I started calling them about a month ago. So it was May, well, I'll check back in June. And then I'll check back the first of July. So I go from month to month to week to week because now I got to kick it up because now I know you're actively engaged. I'm not going to lose you. Right. So this story has been with me for a long time. And I don't know if you were part of the webinars that I shared this story. We had a gentleman that was in our dashboard. He came in in May. My agent called me in November and she said, I had a lead call me back. And I just started laughing. I said, that does happen once in a while. <laughs> and she said, but no, you don't understand. She says, Bev, do you know how many phone calls we have to him? So from May to November, how many phone calls based on your habits do you think we made to him? Um, based on our habits, depending on how we put them in, into our system. So if they're in November, you never talk to him. Okay, so if we came in, if he came into my system in May, and I know he's November, um, I would have probably spent until I found out when he was due, I would have spent on a weekly. So one, two, three, four, because the system, uh, uh, rather, however, it starts falling up until I reach them, then I put them on weekly, once I move them off of weekly, and if I determine if they're there in November, well, I've, I figure it's going to take you, we need to do a four month circuit so i'm pulling you back four months and that's when i start on you weekly bi-weekly all over again and i'm watching your emails and i'm sending you text messages so i uh, you're with in time in terms of phone calls i would say around 15 16 phone calls you're going to tell me more 78. wow two voicemails you made 78 phone calls guess how much it cost us 
well, how much did you make in the deal? <laughs> Our average sales price was 250,000. He was 400,000 cash. He called my agent in November and said, I feel like I owe you a phone call because we were down in the area driving around getting a feel for the location because we are going to be selling our home in the spring. The reason I didn't pick up the phone all this time because it wasn't worth us having a conversation because we were so far out. But we were down driving around and I told my wife, we owed you a phone call because you have been so persistent and consistent over all this time. How could we not use you when you're working that hard just to try to get a hold of me? Because now I know what kind of agent you're going to be whenever we actually hire you. Okay. So just keep doing it. And yes, we're not going to win them all. And that was only one story, right? So you're calling them twice a week. So it depends. So like whenever the, I had suggested the that the priority of all, because we never had a conversation with him. Mm hmm but he was actively engaged. So when a lead comes in, we call them as new. We make six to eight attempts in the first two weeks. After that, if they're actively engaged looking at properties, it's once a week. Okay, so, so he maybe. literally stayed engaged with our website constantly. So he literally got, now we were 10 to 12 attempts in our first two weeks back then. Now we backed it down to six to eight because we, we did our projections and our, our amount of answers went way down after the eighth call. So we're just like, it's not even worth keeping that scenario because you have new leads coming in. At some point you're backlogged and you can't keep up that pace with all your leads. So you have to cut it off somewhere. So six to eight, well so he was 10 to 12 attempts in the first two weeks so mid-may he was already at 12 attempts and we called him every single week up through november what did you have what sis what cycle in the system did you have him under then we had him in a priority filter that was registered 15 or more days a good phone number and actively engaged within 30 days Okay, so perhaps we need something like this. Maybe we need to uh, adjust our filters. And I did that because what happens in that filter is no matter how long ago the lead registered, mm -hmm. it, it, they could have registered five years ago, four years ago. If they opened an email, it would drop them into that filter and we would be able to see, oh, that lead registered 200 days ago and hasn't had a phone call in a year. That's a hot one because if they came back after that long, we will never skip a beat and we will never miss it. And then he's getting called, that lead's getting called once a week for at least four weeks if they don't even come back after that initial visit. Okay. This is excellent. And we should work on a filter like this because what we do with those leads, as soon as we see that somebody's come back, we see the email that they've come back. We email them, we text message and then we call them and we stay on top and we watch to see because those are the people who continue to be active. They won't answer the phone, but they'll continue to be active in the emails. Yep. Yeah. And so a lot a of times those active people are literally mm -hmm. just looking, but yeah. we don't know. And I set that filter on the tried to contact because we run our call filters off of people that we never spoke to. Okay. So when you look at, so you can have priority filters. I lost my mouse. Hang on, there we go. You can have priority filters that are all just, I've never spoke to you because I like to be able to pull up a list. I know, I know I never spoke to you. So, Hey, this is Beverly. I saw you've been looking at homes and blah, blah, blah. But then whenever you get to these filters, you know you've had conversations. You have to pay a little bit more attention to notes. Yes. So these will take a little bit longer to get through because you got to like dial it, notes. look at the note, and then dial it again right? or dot, dial another one. Whereas the other one, you can just click through. And it's automated. You can duplicate it. You can train to it. You can, all right, this is the filter for the leads that registered the last 14 days that we never spoke to. This is a filter for the leads that are actively engaged in, the, in within 30 days. 
And this is the filter of the inactive leads that are tried to contact because they're a little bit lower priority. They can be once a month. So the longer ago they registered mm -hmm. and have been active, the further down the priority list the leads get. Because you can send out emails or you can send out text messages to those, to the masses, so that you can literally touch your entire dashboard without having to make phone calls to everybody. Because if you send an email out to the people that are older and say, hey, at one point you were looking at homes and da da da, just wondering, are you still in the process or did you buy something? Mm -hmm. Well, if they open the email, they're going to come back active because. Crystal, correct me. Is Crystal still here? I don't even see her. I don't see her. I don't see her either. I, I just realized. I'm like, I don't see her <laughs> here. I don't know how we're still running. Um, That's you're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> correct me. So, so I'm going to ask anybody here to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the way Agent Locator is set up with their filter on last activity, it doesn't necessarily mean that they opened up a home search it means that they opened up an email. email. So if you send an email to your older leads and they open up the email, they're going to automatically fall in that filter. And they're going to know who you are because mm -hmm. they just opened the email. So it's a great way to catch the tried to contact people. But I love this filter as well. You just have to be very, very conscious of making sure that you are adding and removing the tags. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. That, yeah, that, that's the only struggle with tags because tags aren't dynamic. They're static. Right. So you have to be conscious about, because what will happen if you don't remove it and you add another one, you're going to have everybody in, in all of them and it defeats the purpose of the filter. Right. <laughs> The uh, right now with tags, basically what we the main thing that we change is their timelines. So mm -hmm. if we've moved them from being a one week to a two week, or if we know somebody's a month, or we're moving them back into a one week status, that's the one yeah. thing we do. Yeah. It's so you have to take this one different. off and then go move it to a monthly, right? But exactly. I love I love this concept because we always forget to set and reset tasks. So this is a much quicker way to obtain getting to them in a quicker way and having them in a call filter. Right. Yeah, so I do love this. You are not doing anything wrong. You're doing everything right. And it is frustrating, but making a game of the filters, instead of being attached to the outcome of the appointment, have fun with the process and say, how many people, how many people can I have conversations with to get this down to four, right? Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if you're calling these people, they're gonna be on a week to week for how long and before you move it to a monthly or a bi-weekly? How many phone calls do you make on the weekly before they go to bi-weekly? When I get frustrated. <laughs> 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 but you have spoken with these people, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my favorite, uh, here's one for you. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. It's something like Tasman, something like that. Had a great conversation, first conversation with her. Even I think the first two conversations were great. Now she hangs up on me when I call her. Where would you slot her? <laughs> <laughs> call her with a different number? Yeah, so we do that. So sometimes we, use, most of the time we use the dialer and then sometimes we play that little we do the uh, cell phone strategy of using our cell phones or her phone. But as soon as phone. I say, hey, I'm got, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. We have a nice conversation. I'm calling from Najib's office at Royal LePage Real Estate Service. Click. <laughs> so uh, this is what I do. And it, this seriously happened to me. I have a story for everything, I swear. I had a lady hang up on me six freaking times. Never had a conversation with her. She's, hey, this is Beverly. I was calling. Is it click? Click. Hey, this is Beverly. You were looking up. Click. Oh boy. And it, so literally I'm like, Hey, 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 don't hang up on me. I have something important to say. And I said, you've been looking at homes. I just want to find out what's going on. She says, I have horrible cell phone service here. Can you please call me at this number? She gave me her home number and I had a great conversation with her. Fantastic. She did not hang up on me. 
if okay. she did, she knew we would not be able to continue a conversation because she, she was getting frustrated with her own phone service at her home. Okay. But we love to assume. Oh, but here's the thing. We're not throwing out the people who hang up on us. We, we, keep, we keep them because it's more of a challenge to actually, who am I kidding? It irritates them that I call them. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I'm keeping you in my dialing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna go over. I had someone ask if I could review the parameter of the filters. So I'm going to quickly just go over what to filter here. So I'm just gonna show it because that's the easiest way I know how to do it. So I'm gonna clear this filter out. Make sure you just add, add the, the non-contact with the... And when you're adding your filter, you wanna add pipeline and you wanna put in your not set, new lead and try to contact because these are all people that you've never spoke to. Perfect, this is that filter that you were talking about, right? Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. So I'm gonna build the third one, right? That, 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 that one has a little bit more moving parts to it than the second one. So this one is catching everybody that you have not spoke to, just okay. in case they don't get moved to try to contact, just in case, right? And then because it's a call filter, you wanna make sure that you have the phone validity because you don't want people with bad numbers in your filter. Okay. And then the last one is activity. You can spell it, right? You want this within 30, so all leads within the last 30 days. Okay. You have 18 leads that have actively been engaged with emails that registered, oh, Hang on, I get that's that's the other piece is the registration date. Is more than da, 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 after this. No, 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 I don't want that date. No, I don't want that one. All right, we gotta go back and redo this one. Hang on. Registration. All leads older than. 15 days. I'm trying with audio. Okay, I'm in. 17. So the filter prior to this, this is my priority three filter. The mm -hmm. first priority are your new leads and your right. not set leads, right? I haven't, I haven't even tried calling you because yep. as soon as you attempt that phone call or the text message goes out, it automatically moves to try to contact. Yep. So first filter is new lead. Second filter is Pipeline, not set new lead, tried to contact. Mm -hmm. Phone validity, unknown or valid. Registration is less than 14 days. Okay. It's priority two. But this one is my favorite because when you look at registration date, You have I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what that said. It, what was it, it? You can sort it by most recent to least recent registered. Okay, perfect, thank so you. So this lead is your oldest registered lead that's been active 18 hours ago. Okay. So they registered March 10th. They were mm -hmm. active 18 hours ago and there hasn't been a phone call for two months. Oh boy, okay. There's no tag on them, okay. My, yeah, because you haven't spoke to them. You haven't yeah. spoke to them. Who is it, Cheryl Downs? Uh -huh. yeah. Lons. Can't see it. Okay. So these are your oldest registered. And so this one, 29 days, she's going to fall out on day 31 because mm -hmm. it's only set for 30 days. And you are, I mean, you guys are doing everything you need to be doing there. This is normal. This okay. is absolutely a hundred percent normal to see that. I'm, I'm ecstatic to see this many phone calls. Oh yeah. But here's the thing, right? People answer the phone at different reason or at different times for different reasons. Yes. And so many times I've had happen to me. I don't even know why I answered the phone today, but I'm glad I did. The energy that we put out when we sit down to call leads, the more of an expectation we have of, I need this, I need to talk to them. I have to have this. I have to make this happen. It's, it's almost like it's working against you. 
if you're like, yep, I got to call these 17 leads. Don't care what happens. I'm just going to have fun with it because I, I, I just want to call them because then I'm not going to have to call anybody for another, for another week. And it's clear the filter out. So this way you can always be watching this filter. Now you can set it, and I, I don't get this um, enamorous, but you can set it that they'll, that they'll just fall out because you can set it to say phone call hasn't happened in the last seven days. So you can zero the filter out if you put another filter in here to say phone call less than seven days or more than seven days. Yeah, I, I, I get all confused in the process because sometimes you can like, uh, you're, you're trying to upthink the filter. But what I always do in this filter is I just go to last contact and I just do last call, least recent. And if I see it's been more than seven days, that that's who I call. Because I like to keep an eye on the total number in my filter at all times. Hmm. Okay. So I hope that um, helps you all. I'm just going to save it as priority three. Do you want me to save it as company or personal? Uh, it would go under personal, right? It, that's the second set. But, um, there you go. Thank you. Let me look. I'm going to look in the um, Q&A real quick, too. Bev, Beverly, yeah. it's Brana. How are you? Good. How are you? What happened to Crystal? Uh, her power went out, so I've jumped on <laughs> in her place. <laughs> so... Yeah, so <laughs> I, I literally just finished a training. Chris was like, I need your help. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all good. Um, we're continuing, but I just want to let you know it's me, not Crystal. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. So and I'm here. Janet, you had a question as far as sending text or email during the first two weeks. Absolutely, because it's it used to be back in the day by land, by sea, by air. Well, now it's by text, by phone, by email. So we want to see how the leads are going to be communicating and we want to recognize text is the, is the best way to recognize if we have a good phone number, right? Is this so-and-so? Is it Cheryl? No. Okay. Wrong number, right? Um, what I do is I have a new lead campaign and it basically the text piggybacks off of the email and the email piggybacks off of the text message. Because all we're trying to do is get them to raise their hand, just yes, no's. So this is where closed ended questions come into play. You can use it on text messages because you're just trying to get them to respond back. Because if you're asking them an open ended question on text, they're probably not going to be responding because they, they don't want to take that long to type. So you want to ask yes, no questions in text messages to keep the conversation going. So in the text message, this is where I like to take advantage of letting them know, hey, shit's going to spam and you're probably not getting it, right? So it's, hey, we sent you an email uh, on the latest homes. Did you get it? That's the text. The email will say, hey, did you get our text about the latest homes that we've just sent you? So we want to see what their response is. So I just do that a couple of times. So they get about three text messages and about three emails in the course of the six to eight phone calls. Do you have a way of combining that? Because I'm literally doing that manually. We are. Oh, no, 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 you no. You can do that through a campaign, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what I'll do is I'll get Crystal to reach out to you and she can um, help arrange for you how to put that together. Yes. Fantastic. That, that would be a, that, that would be a godsend <laughs> for me. Right in the campaign point. template builder, you just build your yeah. templates and then you, you build, can automate. Exactly. Exactly. You just build the you just build the campaign with template emails and templated text message or even writing the text message into the campaign and then you set it for X number of days in between. And then once you assign it, it just goes. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so I'll, I'll make a note of that, guys, for yes, you. I appreciate that. I would appreciate that, that because I literally my pleasure. from making the phone call, reading what my notes are, uh, leaving a voicemail, sending a text message, sending an email, and then move on to the next lead. So it's a little bit time not consuming. It's, not <laughs> it's time consuming. You want to yeah. get in and get out as quickly as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, for all other text messages, for all other emails, 
I personally am not a fan of automation. I mm -hmm. like, I like the new lead campaign because it's not 50 to hundred text messages at one time. I can, I can handle the responses. I can see the responses. The responses don't get missed. However, if you have campaigns running and you may apply them all at one time and you have a text message going out to 100 or 150 leads and you don't realize when that text message goes out and you get 25 text responses and you're out showing a property, <laughs> less is more because mm -hmm. now you kind of got egg on your face because you can't respond to all these people and you're like, oh my God, what do you normally expect when you send a text message to somebody? So if you receive a text message and you reply back, you're expecting a reply back right away because you just got the first text message, right? So 100%. I like to have that control of who I'm texting. So the other piece to this filter, now that I got this one saved, I'm gonna show you, um, well, let me just, I, I gotta clear it out. So the biggest piece of your dashboard is going to be the leads that are inactive that you've never spoke to. So again, it's the exact same thing, the pipeline status, the phone validity, because it's a, it's a phone campaign. And then this one's going to be activity. This is going to be more than 31 days. Perfect. So these leads have not been active, 44. So when you're watching your, you have 17 in the active, you have 44 in the inactive. Okay, these so are we saying, can I interrupt you for a second? So sure. when we're looking at this Stephanie uh, one, now are we saying she's inactive or active? What is she falling under? She inactive. has not been active for more than a month. Okay, she's constantly opening up her emails, but she's not, it's, it's like she's just looking because you can tell when they she open for a month. I, I just saw her on our on our database just this past week or two. Like I see not at database. So in she's going to go in. Okay, she's going to be able to look at the emails that is letting you know guys whether or not she's actually clicking on any properties within that email. So ah. her looking at the email. Okay. Her looking at the email is just her looking at the email. So you're just getting an indication through the email system right. that, that she actually she's just opened it. Mm -hmm. When she actually clicks on that, that's considered activity. Gotcha. So then we get a notice that she's looking at the email. That's right. That's what you're okay. getting. Yep. Huh. Okay. Excellent. That's good to yep. know too. Yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So this is where I would pull off your tags. Yeah. Because if I've never spoke to you, mm -hmm. you're just going in my automated call filters because you really don't deserve me to work you one by one, or you don't even deserve me setting up your searches. Okay. I'm literally, so when you look at segregating your database, mm -hmm. everybody that you have never spoke to, mm -hmm. They don't need any tags. They don't need any tasks that because they're going to fall in one of these filters. Okay. Active or inactive. And then Perfect. these ones you call once a month. So my suggestion, whenever you're doing a filter like this, whenever you have 44 in here, mm -hmm. don't call them all one day because guess what happens next month? You have 44 again. You have 44 call. on the same day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Been so there, done that. <laughs> yeah, right. Do 21 day and five another day and 20 another day because this is as you're growing your database of leads coming in, and this is going to grow. Right. I have some dashboards that have 2,000 in this one, mm -hmm. 5,000 in this one. You can't get to them all. Yes. No. Right. So then you can start working it with leads that are. That, that have been active between 30 and 90 days, mm -hmm. 91 and 150 days, right? Because the longer they've been inactive, the less of a priority they are because you've got bigger fish to fry with the ones that are active. And right. that's where you can start automating. You can send out a, a, a mass text. I, I don't suggest doing more than 50 text messages at a time, 100 emails at a time. 
because you'll be a slave to your phone. Emails out of 100, you might get one or two respond. Out of 50 text messages, you'll get about four or five that respond. Okay. Okay. And that way you can be it's manageable. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but as far as, in my opinion, these check-ins should literally only be people that you have spoke to. Yes. So that your brain can go, I've never talked to you. Oh, I want to pay a little bit more attention to you. You're a little bit higher of a quality because we've had a conversation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's, what that's my perfect. systems look like in the follow-up process is depending upon, I like to ask the lead when they would like me to follow up with them. Mm -hmm. What makes the most sense based on your timeline for me to check back in with you? Okay. And they may say, I just had one yesterday. I followed, she told me July mm -hmm. because they are paying off a few bills and they're saving money for their down payment. I talked to her yesterday and she says, we still have a couple more bills to pay off. I said, when does it make sense for me to follow up with you? She said, August. I could have let it go at that and said, okay, I'm thinking August 1st. Mm -hmm. I said, would that be the beginning, middle or end of August? What would be better for you? She says, the end of August would be much better. That gives me time. Great. Now she's now giving me permission to call her, right? Right. If I don't call her, I have failed in my value to offer to the client, whether she picks up or not, but mm -hmm. that is the only way that we can show our value is by doing what we say we're going to do. Because these leads don't really care about you. They care yes. about one thing. Who's going to be available when I want to see a property. Yes. And when are they going to answer the phone? And the only way we can ensure of any potential is to call, call, call that consistency because they know your number. And can you say your line one more time? Which one? So, um, I, cause I would say when is, when, when was the best time for me to contact you? What is your line for that again? Oh, I, I just asked them, when is the best time for me to follow up with you? What, when does it make like sense for me to check in with you? Okay. Morning, afternoon, evening. No, no, but so the, I, I like that. I like the sentence. I like sure. how she's, she expressed it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank because you. Because then it puts it on them, right? And you have something to measure. Because most people are not going to intentionally lie to you of their time frame. You know, some people may say, I'm going to lease until next September. I'm not planning on buying at all. Well, you never know what's going to happen to their life within the next year. You may plan on following up with them in June for a September lease and they already bought. You're like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. Well, you, don't, you have no idea what happened in their life, right? You're, you're not going to win them all. Um, but for the most part, I do. I ask everybody, when does it make sense for me to follow up with you again? And then that way because I don't like making follow-up calls. They're just not fun for me. I, I like I like the newness. I like the people I've never spoke to hmm. because the follow-ups do get frustrating, but I have to cha change my logic and thinking and just, they're just a number two. And that's why I love having call filters with numbers in there because then I can have a little bit of fun. It's like Candy Crush. How many out of the 44 can I get out of here? Because this is automatically going to Let's say I talk to Stephanie. Mm -hmm. If I talk to Stephanie and move her to contacted, I'm gonna be down to 43. Yep. If Skylar opens up an email, I'm gonna be down to 42. So it just makes it more of a numbers game than it does a people game. Because there's that damn Julia. Oh my gosh, I've called her a hundred times. She's in the system constantly. She won't ever pick up the phone. What do I do with her? Forget about Julia. She's just another number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Crystal, no, do it, right? we have a lady, um, Gail Reeves, who has a question. She wants to know what the filter for number four homework is. The filter for num. Yeah, so when you go into the apply safe filters, there's a number four there that says homework. Oh. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know what that is either. 
Do you guys know what that filter that. is? We have homework set for ourselves <laughs> just to make sure we're on top of everything all the time. So we <laughs> do you want to click on? Are you, is it okay if she clicks on oh, that? Yeah, sure. Go sure ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Homework is homework is a filter that's set up to make sure if it's if it's people labeled or if 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 we oh, if we've actually labeled them or not or whatever the case is, and then we have to pop into there every now and again to make sure to if those are leads that we that we've missed labeling or whatever the case is. Yeah. Okay. It's just another, it's not another cross check for us because we had no other way of stuff not falling out of the cracks. Fair enough. Okay. So it's just your made contacts at meeting sign agreement showing things yeah. like that. So those people that you've already been in some sort of communication with. We need to make, yeah, we're supposed to make sure that they, uh, they're, they're marked. Fair enough. And, and that, this is a great filter. And so let me add to this a little bit. I have a filter that says contacted mm -hmm. because this system, if a lead calls back, it's going to move it to make contact. If a lead responds to text, it moves it to make contact. So it accidentally moves it out of those priority filters that we just set. Yeah. And they can get missed. Yes. So in my opinion, a lead that is in made contact, it has to have one of two things, a tag with the situation of the conversation that they are not in need of our services at any time in the really unforeseeable future. They're low value, they're bad credit, they're relocating, they're divorcing, their future opportunity because they're just looking, they're a renter, um they have an agent whatever the myriad of reasons are they have to have a situation tag or a task so if we have the catch-all filter of any lead that gets moved to make contact and i see that there's no tag or no task red flag they're going to get lost in the system because they're not falling in to say hey contact this lead or you're in, you're in my, you're in my try to contact filter. Mm -hmm. So when you have the leads in here, literally you will personally be able to get to know every single lead. And all you have to do is come in here and add the tags of what you're tagging them and say, I don't want people. And I, I have no idea what tags you may have or don't have. Okay. So you have the future opportunity. So what I do is like your situation tags, your future opportunity tags, or any buyer loss tags. You can add here, say tag, none. You don't want anybody with the FO tags, right? So then you know nobody's gonna fall, fall in here that has a tag. Okay. Because they're not supposed to fall in there. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. Yeah. So that way, the people that are genuinely in here are just the people that got moved to contacted because they called back or they texted. When we have, um, there's, there's one or two texts that, that get sent out that the, the, um, that the person will respond yes to. And because they've responded yes, they fall into made contact. However, saying that we can't contact them again, we we are unable to contact them again either by phone or by text. Yep. So to me, some of those people I've switched out of made contact because try to contact. Just move them back to try to contact. I move that's them back. I, I move yeah, them back to try to contact because, like in essence, I really haven't contacted them. They responded to probably, hey, are we like, is this your email address? Or are we okay to send? Yep emails to you. Yep. Absolutely. 100%. We're over time, but I, I want to yes. close this by clarifying voicemails because I know that comes up a lot and I'm actually surprised nobody asked it today. I do not leave voicemails on anybody that I have not spoken to. Is it right? Is it wrong? Don't know. It just doesn't work with my efficiency because mm -hmm. if I leave voicemails, I can't get through to the masses. And when I'm literally making my dials at 23 seconds a dial, four rings, I get more callbacks. So if I veer off of that efficiency model, 
I'm not going to get nearly as many leads dialed, nor am I going to receive the callbacks because by the time their voicemail picks up, I listen to it and I leave my voicemail, I could have made three more dials. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. on my follow-ups and my nurtures, I ping pong. I try calling. The next week I'll leave a voicemail. The next week I'll try calling and then send a text message. Hey, I've been trying to reach you. And literally in my opinion, this is just my opinion. I like to give them permission to not answer the phone because people will inevitably avoid you because they feel bad that they have not been taking your calls. Sure. So we want to remove that awkwardness to be able to say, Hey, I know you're busy. Don't expect you to call me back. Just want you to know that I am here when the time is right for you. And don't care when you're going to buy. I just would love the opportunity to work with you. Sure. Then that way you've now given them permission to not call you back. You, you took away the awkwardness and you can still continue. I'll just check back in with you next week. So every time, like every two weeks, I'll just check back in with you in a few days. I'll just check back in with you next week. Meanwhile, you're saying, don't worry about calling me back, but I'm gonna keep calling your ass until you pick up the phone. <laughs> That's right. Don't give up. Yes. And it does, right? Diligence, right? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. So when you have that frustrated moment, just be glad that you have the leads to call. And just say, you know, I'm not gonna win them all. You're just a number. Okay. And 78 dials. <laughs> it really awesome. is. It's, you're like, oh, God, I don't even want to call this lead back. But I have to be able to say I did everything I could if they end up buying with somebody else. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope you had some nuggets to take away. You were very helpful. Thank you very much, Beverly. We appreciate it. Fantastic. You guys are doing an amazing job. Thank Just you. Keep doing it. We're trying. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much guys for um, being a part of this webinar and Beverly again, thank you so much for all your insight with all of those nuggets. Cause I even got something in terms of the contact filter quite truthfully. Um, Cause I never thought of that. So, you know, being a trainer here at agent locator, that certainly is going to be something that I would use with, with some of the clients. So that's awesome. Um, I think there might be one question here. I'm not sure. Uh, nope. Somebody's just saying, thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. <laughs> so last week's contender. We, there you go. We stirred up, we stirred up some stuff in her dashboard. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping That's that she's awesome. had some great success over the last week on her leads from six months to a year ago that she didn't want to call. And we, we, I think we had conversations with like two or three of them that want to call back. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to sign this off now. You guys all have a great afternoon Bye, and we will talk Thank to you all soon. Thank you guys so much. Thank Bye guys. You. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Uh, thanks. Bye.